My name is Anthony Fatsies and welcome to the What The Finance podcast, where we interview finance, trading and investing experts to help you understand current market trends and learn about the intricacies of new and existing assets. If you enjoy the podcast and to help with the YouTube algorithm, please like, comment and subscribe. It really helps with the podcast and it means we can continue to get amazing guests. Thanks again. I hope you enjoy. So Robin, thank you so much for joining the What to Finance podcast to talk about your new book, Invest Your Way to Financial Freedom, which is released in a few weeks, I think on the 28th of September. Uh, so sort of my first question, what was the influence for you writing the book? Uh, well, first of all, thank you very much for having me. Um, people have uh, said for a long time now, um, in the 10 years or so that I've been writing about investing and uh, finance, um, you know, why don't you put this into a book? And, and actually, uh, I've been meaning to do that uh, for a long time. Uh, and um, I was actually uh, prompted into getting on with it um, when I was approached by uh, Ben Carlson um, uh, about uh, six months ago now, uh, actually a bit longer than that, um, uh, to saying you know, he's keen to, he was keen to uh, collaborate uh, w- w- on a book with me. Um, and I was really honoured because I'm a I'm a big fan of Ben Carlson. He's a he's a really smart guy. He's a very good writer. He works for a very uh, impressive financial planning firm in the United States called Ritholtz Wealth Management, and it just seemed to be um, too good an opportunity to to turn down. So. Um, uh, that that was my my main motivation. Um, the the other is is frankly I feel very strongly um, that uh, young people need help learning about investing and finance and taking charge of their future financial security. Um, and uh, yeah, some really important messages to get out there that are contained in this book. And I'm hoping that um, you know it might seem a bit grand, but I'm hoping this book is actually going to be life changing for people. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a great uh, mission to have for the book. Um, do you want to maybe talk a bit more about your background and sort of how you got into finance and what you do now? I mean, I'm I'm uh, a journalist. Uh, I uh, worked for many years in in television um, and general sort of news, uh, current affairs, and, and made a, a few uh, documentaries. Um, uh, and uh, it really wasn't until uh, I left mainstream um, broadcasting, I, my, my last job was with Sky News, um, it wasn't until I left that I was really able to focus on a, a, a sort of uh, an area of, of my own, if you like, uh, and that's investing in finance. Um, I always thought I knew about that subject, um, but actually the more I read about it, more I looked into it, the more I realized I was absolutely clueless and I was actually doing more harm than good. And I think that actually, (laughs) that actually is the case for a lot of people um, who who think they know uh, about investing in finance. Um, And um, yeah, so, so the last, uh, yeah, the last 10 years, it was 10 years ago that I made uh, my first online documentary about, um, investing it's called passive investing the evidence uh, and and since then i i've i've focused 100 percent on this subject because um a i find it really fascinating um but 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 b uh, you know i find it hugely important uh, i mean we we have a a a growing uh, sort of global uh, population um we've uh, got uh, uh, longevity rates, which okay, they've taken a bit of a hit in the last in the last few years. They seem to have gone backwards a little bit in in, in Western countries. But basically, we're going to be living for a long, long time, particularly uh, your generation, Anthony. Um, and uh, you know, potentially, you've got you know, 30, 40 years even um, uh, to to. Um, to, to fund when you're not going to be receiving any receiving an income um, and also not going to have I don't think a, a state pension to rely on um, there simply won't be the political will there to fund state pensions in countries like Britain America Australia you know, in the long term future um, you know y- you are very much on your own your generation is very much on your own um, and frankly uh, without putting too fine a point on it uh, you've got a mountain to climb uh, and you better set off now because if you don't, you're not going to get to the top. 
Yeah, definitely. And it's like, as you said, it's sort of the responsibility is really going on the individual rather than it used to be on the state and, the, and you know, companies that used to employ people. And now it's changing, isn't it? That's right. I, I mean, you, you are responsible. No one else is responsible for your financial future. You know, you can't rely on the state. You can't rely on you know, a, a generous employer. Um, you, you can't rely on luck, winning the lottery. Uh, or, or, you know, your children, your friends, your family, charities even, you know, ultimately it's up to you to make sure that you've got enough money to help you to live the life you want to lead for as long as you, you know, as you, as you live for, which, as I say, might for your generation be, you know, typically you know, 90s, 100 plus. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you mentioned like quite a few issues and I guess mistakes people, especially retail traders make um, in the book. Can you maybe mention a few of them and sort of what are the greatest mistakes that they do make? Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to make a distinction between trading and investing. Trading is something that ordinary people, particularly young people, should not be doing. Don't trade. Uh, I, I'm sorry if that is going to offend you know a large number of your, your audience, but <laughs> trading is a complete nonsense um it, it is a bad idea um buy an index fund i mean that's all you need to do um uh, but we've got this constant noise about trading you know it, we've got all these podcasts and, and i know yours is a really good podcast Anthony, but frankly we've got a lot of rubbish podcasts out there we've got too many podcasts out there um we, we've got um we've got social media and, and, and people reading all the time about friends and peers and, and, and so on who, who are apparently making lots of money on cryptocurrency or uh, derivatives or stocks or whatever it is. Um, we, we've got every time we go to a football match now, we've got all these adverts from the likes of, you know, eToro uh, and all these sort of free, so-called free trading platforms. And by the way, they're not free at all. And just because you're not paying broker's fees doesn't mean that you're actually uh, getting a, a, a free trade. Um, you know, every time you look on the Internet, social media, um, you know, financial magazines, we, we're, we're bombarded with trading ideas. Stop, stop, ignore them, tune out the noise, buy an index fund. If you think about it, if you buy an individual stock, that is an extremely risky thing to do compared to buying an index fund you know you, you can buy index funds today which will give you exposure to thousands literally thousands of companies around the world now if one of those companies goes uh, goes uh, bankrupt or uh, it, you know it, 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 it turns out to be um, you know not not the great investment idea it looked it's not a big deal because you've got you know, um, 999 other, other stocks or whatever in your portfolio. So you really don't notice it. But if you happen to pick a stock, which everyone's kind of pumping on, on social media, and, and they promote these stocks for a reason, you know, um, and, and, and we've got very, very, um, we've got very clever traders who are, you know, um, uh, promoting stocks in the hope that you know uh, naive young people will go out and buy them um, and, and the price tanks you really are in trouble um, you know we, we think about high risk investments and we, we tend to think about derivatives and 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 uh, you know complex risky instruments like that but individual stocks is a very very risky way to invest I know one of those sort of chapters in your books is actually enlist the health of the tax man uh, which I found quite interesting. And you mentioned sort of a few, you know, not to give all the secrets away in the book, uh, but we men you mentioned a few techniques and mechanisms that people can use. And I know one of them was the ISA, uh, which I, I personally had never heard before. Can you maybe expand on that and maybe talk about other potential options? Well, you, you were mentioning mistakes earlier and mistakes to avoid. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is not to take advantage of the tax breaks on offer. Uh, and and simply they pay far too much tax on their um, trading returns or investment returns. Um, you know, for me, one of the big arguments against using these trading sites um, is that you know you're not getting any tax help at all. But if you open a 
pension or if you contribute to your um, em uh, employer's pension uh, fund, um, then you are getting, uh, you know, say you are a you know 25% tax rate payer or whatever it is, you are getting that much from the government. So for, for every pound you put in, you're getting, you know, 25p um, free from the government. Why would you turn that down? What, why um, do, do you want to um, trade stocks? And, and, you know, if you do make a killing, then you're going to get a tax bill on it. What's the point of that? Um, so, um, yeah, you, you, you need to take advantage of, of the tax breaks um, from from certainly from pension funds. And, 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 you know, for me, that's the thing you really should be focusing on. ISAs are nice to have, you know, uh, individual savings accounts are, are, are nice to have. Focus on your pension first. And once you're putting the maximum that you feel you can into that, then, yeah, by all means, put some into um, an ISA. Um, uh, and 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 then you're going to, uh, you know, get get sort of favourable uh, sort of tax treatment and 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 so on. And um, and of course, always have um, a cash reserve. You know, I'd really really encourage young people to do this to get six months of income behind them. Um, you know, if something were to happen, I don't know. Say, for example, the worst would happen. You you know you. You, you have a really bad accident or, or you become ill or your, your parents become ill and you want to take time off to look after them or whatever it is, um, you know, you need to have that cash cushion, if you like. That's, that's the first thing. Saving comes first. Investing comes next. Yeah, definitely. And I think, I think sometimes I know for myself and I'm sure a lot of our uh, other young people as well we, we want it now we don't want to wait we don't want to you know put all this money aside for 40 years time it's almost too far to think but uh, as you said it's something that's so important and the early you start just the compounding that occurs is, is massive mm. look i was your age once <laughs> Anthony, and i know what it's like and you're in such a rush and you want things now 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 um and um yeah, you, you may be tired of people of my generation saying this, but you've got to think about the long term. You've got to think about your future self. You've got to learn to like and love your future self. Really take care of your future self because your future self needs you. Uh, you haven't met him yet. You, 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 you don't know <laughs> what position you're going to be in when you're 60 or 70. Um, if you you know, as expected, you live that long, but you've got to start thinking about your future self now. Yeah. And I know a, a sort of a key point in the book is savings and just, uh, you know, you mentioned it there contributing the pensions, but also ramping up your savings as much as possible and almost getting to the point where, you know, you, you save and then you have the rest of spending. It's not the other way around. That's right. There's, there's a um, principle in personal finance that you pay yourself first and that's, really really important um I mean, look, all these temptations out there things to spend your money on look you know apple have just announced a whole load of new products i'm sure lots of young people will have their beady eyes on those things but do you really need the very latest iphone the very latest ipad what you know why can't you make do with the one you've got now of course you've got to live in the present you've got to enjoy life now um, enjoy being young because you're only young once um, but what I would say is you know if you're going to spend money spend it on experiences spend it on education learning um, spend it on spending time with people you care about girlfriends parents relatives whatever it is um, going on holiday going to places that you might you know not have time to visit in the future um, do it um, don't buy stuff you know don't keep buying clothes that you'll never wear or you know shoes you'll never wear or you know gadgets that you frankly don't need um, uh, you know, don't spend more than you can afford and you know, with that spending money, spend it on things which are actually going to enrich your life rather than just add to your clutter. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that's, it's so easy just to, as you said, just to keep accumulating things. But at the end of the day, you want to focus on those things that, you know, really impact your, you know, your memories and, and provide great memories. So, exactly. um, yeah. So at the end of the book, you mentioned sort of the 20 rules of personal finance, uh, which I found really useful. Can you maybe just um, choose a few that you think are quite important for people to know? Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give too much away yeah. because I want you to go out and read this book. And, and, and most important of all, I really, really encourage you to act on it. Um, because um, one of the things actually about financial education that research shows is that people forget what they learn within two or three months. So they'll, they'll read a book and they'll think, that's, that's a really good idea. I really ought to do that. And then two or three months later, you know, something else has come along, you know, they're focusing on something else in their life and that, you know, just doesn't get done. What I want people to do is to read this book and start acting on it. And there's no time like the present. You know, the best time to start investing, if you haven't started already, is today. Um, and I, I, yes, of course, the market might tank tomorrow. Uh, you know, no one knows what the what the you know immediate future for the stock market holds. Um, but um, you, you know, if you're sensible and and you're just committing a small amount of money to start with, and then you're putting money away on a, a regular basis, then you limit that that risk, if you like. Of, of, of that, we call it market risk of, of you know, suddenly, you know, the, 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 the market going down. Um, and the, the sooner you start, the, the more money you'll accumulate and the sooner that amazing um, phenomenon of, of, of compounding will kick in. I just don't think people realize how powerful compounding is. You know, for, for every pound you put in now in your, in your, 20s Anthony you'll have to put in you know 10 pounds I don't know what the exact figures are but it's something ar around that in, in your 50s um in, in today's money um and um you know what why why when you've got this amazing opportunity uh, to to start benefiting from compound returns uh, you know early in life why don't you do it yeah, definitely. I think there's a classic chart where if, you know, if you're starting your twenties, you almost have double the amount of money that you'll have in your sort of when you retire. Um, and, you know, that's not including if you, you know, when you get older, hopefully you're getting more pace and hopefully you can put more into it. So then it will just massively increase. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as, as far as kind of rules of finance are concerned, I will, I will just mention a couple. Uh, I mean, the, the obvious one, and this might sound boring, and I've sort of touched on it uh, already, is, is diversification. It really, really is the key. You know, don't buy one stock, buy an index fund with hundreds of stocks in. Um, you know, it's just logical. Um, so, you know, if, if, if one of those stocks tanks, then, you know, it's, it's just not an issue. Um, and, and, you know, have global diversification. So you, so you don't just focus on the UK or Australia, but, you know, good though, I think the you know, prospects are for, well, both of those countries actually, in, you know, in, in the future, you know, get exposure to, to, to all markets, America, definitely, because it's, it's such a, uh, it's still such a sort of massive e economy, um, but, but China, um, India, um, Japan, emerging markets, you know, the, the, you, you, Korea, you need to have exposure to those as well. Um, so, so that's the that's the first thing, um, and uh, the second thing, and and this is something we go on and on about in the book. Actually, is the importance of keeping it simple. Um, you know, uh, we like to make things as complicated as possible. Uh, you know, it's a human trait, unfortunately, um, but actually, the simpler you can make it, the better. Um, instead of accumulating funds or accumulating stocks, why not just have one fund? Why not just start with a single global equity index tracker? And then maybe when you're 30, maybe you add a, you know, a bonds fund or a, you know, an, an, another fund to, to, to that, but, but just keep it simple. Keep putting money away on a regular basis 
and just tune out the noise and don't listen to these trading podcasts. Obviously, listen to yours, Anthony, um, but just <laughs> ignore all the noise about trading. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. And, um, you know, it's one thing that they say that a lot of these people, especially in the media and other places, they have these conflicts of interest. You know, if they didn't talk about trade, especially the finance people, they didn't talk about new stocks every day, they, no one would listen to them. And then that's mm. the main reason they do it. <laughs> Exactly right. I mean, you know, if 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 financial journalism was really about helping investors get the best possible outcomes, then every time you open the financial pages, uh, there'd be someone there talking about the benefits of low cost index funds, the importance of keeping your costs low, the importance of diversification, the importance of taking a long term view. Do you hear that? <laughs> of course you don't. It's always about the latest star manager, the latest active fund, the latest theme, uh, the latest fall in the stock market or the latest pundit who thinks that stocks are going to rise or, you know, it's all the stuff you absolutely don't want or need to hear that you that you that you read in the in the in the papers. Look. I'm a journalist myself. I don't want to do journalists down because there are lots of good principled journalists out there that most financial media is positively harmful, harmful. And, and, and that's yeah, no, no exaggeration to say to, 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 to good investor outcomes. Perfect. So Robin, thank you so much for joining the podcast today. Um, if you could leave sort of, or what would you say is one message that you'd like readers to take away from your book? Keep it simple. You know, Keep it simple and um, you know, don't spend too much time thinking about it. Just, just, just read the book, do what <laughs> we advise in the book and get on with your life. You know, don't worry about will crypto go up or down or will, um, you know, gain stop or whatever their sort of latest fashionable stock is, whether it will, you know, rise or fall. You know, there are more important things in life, frankly, than watching stocks and markets go up and down. Um, keep it simple. Yeah, and it's very easy to do just looking at the charts all day. But as you said, just you just got to let it go sometimes. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, perfect. So I know it's released on the 28th of September on Amazon. Is there anywhere else that people could get it if they wanted to? Okay, it's it's available for pre-order now. The book is called uh, Invest Your Way to Financial Freedom. Um, it's by Ben Carlson and myself, Robin Powell, and uh, it is published by Harriman House. As you say, it is available. It is well, it's published on the 28th of September, but it is available for pre-order from today. So, so get on, get out there um, and order it. Yeah, perfect. And I found it very useful, so I'm sure our viewers will too. Robin, <laughs> thanks again. Cheers, Anthony. Good talking to you. you too. Thank you so much for listening. And if you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe and click the bell icon so you are notified when new podcasts are released. I hope you're leaving with some great value about investing, trading, and finance. See you on the next show.